Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute. And this is case 94 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating that what appears to be easy may sometimes not be as easy as it seems. This was the patient who had an LAD CTO. There was a well-defined tapered entry proximal cap. The occlusion appeared to be relatively short, less than 20 millimeters. Distal vessel was of good caliber, although there was some calcification throughout the vessel and the CTO segment, and there was no previous failure. There were collaterals coming from the same side, and there were tortuous as small, however, not appearing very appropriate for retrograde crossing. So if we look at various scores, this would be a JCTO score of 1, because there is a tapered entry, there is calcification at one point, there is no more than 25 degrees bending, there is less than 20 millimeters occlusion length, and there is no previous failure. And when we look at the progress CTO score, it would be also 1, because there is clear proximal cap, but the collaterals do not appear to be appropriate for the retrograde approach, there is no significant tortuosity and it's not a circumflex CTO. So in this particular case, the plan, given the favorable characteristics, was to start with undergrade wire escalation, followed by undergrade dissection reentry, and not attempt the retrograde approach until there was no other option because those collaterals did not appear to be appealing for retrograde crossing. This is the current approach for undergrade wire escalation. The first step is usually with a soft polymer jacketed tapered guide wire, such as the fielded exterior of the fighter wire. And then if the course of the vessel is understood very well, the one uses usually a Gaia, Gaia second in most cases, or if the course of the vessel is not well understood, then a stiff polymer jacketed wire like the Pilot 200 is commonly being used. In this particular case, we advanced a Keravel microcatheter with a workhorse Samurai RC guide wire to get into the lesion. And interestingly enough, the wire seemed to move actually in the right direction, so we attempted to advance it a little bit more. However, it would not advance any further than this part. And then we switched for a fighter, a tapered polymer jacketed guide wire, which also attempted to cross but uh, was stopping in this particular location. During these attempts, there was this contrast extravasation at the side of the proximal cap, which was surprising given that we had not really used very stiff guide wires, but nevertheless can happen if there are some bridging collateral. So that was some source of concern. And that is why we in inflated the proximal uh, balloon to stop the flow into the segment. And indeed, there appeared to be some uh, hemostasis at the time. And then subsequent injections showed that there was temporary sealing. So we were able to advance the guide wire to the distal vessel. We can see from the calcium in the vessel that there is dancing, there is good movement of the wire in sync with the mid LAD. So we advanced a stiff Miracle 6 wire, which is very good for delivering the Stingray balloon, especially in cases like this with some tortuous and calcification that might hinder advancement of the Stingray balloon. And after doing this, and with significant difficulty and after having to predilate that segment several times with small 1.2 and 1.5 millimeter balloons, we were able finally to advance the Stingray wire next to the anticipated re-entry zone. We then did the double blind stick and swap, which is illustrated here. We were able first to go on the bottom, going proximal to the proximal marker of the Stingray. Then we withdraw the Stingray wire and now we're able to advance it between the two markers of the Stingray balloon facing towards the top. So double applying refers to sticking both on one side of the Stingray balloon and the other side of the Stingray balloon without awaiting for a geographic confirmation of which one is the appropriate side. And then after we do that, we switch for a polymer jacketed stiff guide wire such as the Pilot 200, which is advanced, and we see if it takes the course of the vessel. In this particular case, the wire moved, but then entered this septal branch further down in the vessel. This is something that we should in general not do, which is advance a microcatheter and then do a contrast injection. The reason is that if we were subintimal, that 
could uh, significantly cause a hematoma and prevent further attempts for the entering into the distal true lumen. In this particular case, however, we're fairly confident within true lumen and we want to delineate a little better the course of the vessel. We then change for a workhorse guide wire and we're able to advance it into the distal LAD. The lesion was predilated. There is no more extravasation of contrast. There is clearly an area of dissection, but then we do have the wire into the distal true lumen. Delivery of stents was extremely challenging, and that is why we decided to use the guideliner. Guideliner was hard advancing, therefore we used the balloon assisted technique. A balloon was inflated halfway in and halfway out of the guideliner, and when it was deflated, the guideliner was advanced over the balloon to go further down into the vessel. And that was repeated several times until the guideliner went past this, past this proximal bend and all the way into the medial AD at the target lesion. After that, it was fairly easy to advance um, a long drag eluting stent, 38 mm to 5 drag eluting stent, uh, all the way to the mid LAD. And then after withdrawing the guideliner, the stand was positioned carefully, trying to avoid um, covering the ostium of a very large diagonal branch that had some osteal lesion. The stand appeared to be satisfactory. However, we know very well that in heavily calcified vessels like this one, what appears to be good may not always be. And that is why we did intravascular ultrasound. And... Uh, that demonstrated good expansion in the distal part of the stand, but there was clearly an area of significant stand under expansion in the most proximal segment, and there was also some disease more, even more proximal in the vessel. And that is why we uh, did high pressure post dilations that then improved significantly the diameter of the stand. And then, given that there was an additional lesion in the proximal LAD, placed another stand into the proximal LAD which provided a nice final result. There was no compromise of the flow in the diagonal branch, and there was excellent timothy flow all the way in the distal LAD. Interestingly enough, even those septals that were jailed with the wire, even the septal in the subintimal course of the wire were patent at the end. 100 minutes procedure time, less than two hours, 24 minutes of fluor time, 1.4 gray of radiation, and 160 ml of contrast. So this case illustrates that what appears to be simple, which is, for example, a JCTO score of 0 or 1, may actually be more complicated than it seems. You can see that in those cases, it would be JCTO 1 in this particular case. Almost a third of the cases will need a more advanced crossing technique, which is either undergrade dissection reentry in red or use of the retrograde approach, and that's exactly what happened in our case. In summary, this case demonstrates that uh, CTOs may be harder than one thing. Even those CTOs that appear to be relatively simple can become more complicated in case of a guide wire exit or entering into the subintimal space. Therefore, it is important to have experience with more advanced crossing techniques such as undergrade dissection reentry or retrograde, even for those simple lesions. Finally, one should always be careful on the watch out for perforations. If there is doubt, it's still better to first inflate a balloon proximal to the suspected point of perforation and then determine if this is a perforation or a dissection, which can sometimes appear as a perforation. Thank you.